Welcome to the Troy Perry Podcast. And here's your host, Troy Perry. Hey, what's going on, guys? Troy Perry here. This is my first podcast. A little bit nerve-wracking, but I'm um, going to give it a good go. Uh, with my podcast, I'm basically going to, at least for the first 10 episodes, I'm going to make it all about retro wrestling events or even just retro wrestlers that people have forgotten about that we'd love to talk about. Uh, for my first very episode, I thought I'd go to basically an event which was the very first pay-per-view I attended live in person. That pay-per-view happened to be WWE Super Showdown 2018, which was in October 2018. It was held at the Melbourne Cricket Ga- uh, Melbourne Cricket Ground, which is known as the MCG, to those that don't know. Uh, basically, it was advertised as the biggest ever event held in Australia. It was the first ever WWE wrestling pay-per-view held in Australia. Uh, basically, with the event itself, I hadn't been to a wrestling event for maybe 10 years before that. So this was going to be awesome no matter what for me. Um, basically, I spent about just over $200 just for my seat in uh, and... Yeah, it wasn't the best seat, but it was just great to soak in the atmosphere. And every 10 seconds, the crowd loved to do the woo. So that was pretty cool. Um, But yeah, I'll just get straight into the event itself. Well, the official attendance was 70,309. There was no pre-show. There was a countdown. uh, The seats uh, basically... We were told to be there about an hour before the show started. So some of us thought we might get there even a little bit earlier in case there was some sort of pre-show because WWE these days, they do pre-shows where it's just them commentating or extra interviews or even just a match or two, whether it was the Cruiserweight match or just anything like that. However, there was no pre-show. They just went straight to the pay-per-view itself. Uh, It started off with the crowd being red hot, of course. Um... The first match was The New Day, which was consisting of uh, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, accompanied by Big E. Obviously, the trombone was out, the bloody the pancakes were flying, it was a pretty cool sight to see. Uh, their opponents for the match was The Bar, which consists of Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, yeah, these guys, are, these four guys in particular... They deserve definitely uh, better positions than what they have been given. Like, Kofi Kingston, even though he was finally getting the run he deserved, uh, much in the WWE Championship run, um, they basically made him drop it recently to Brock Lesnar in 10 seconds. And then yet, he's supposedly unfazed by it. He hasn't asked for a rematch. And they basically made it seem like it was like men in black, like, you need to forget this match. So, it was a bit random. But anyway... This match itself, it went for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, there was a couple of mistakes, uh, just more so just a little bit of like uh, hesitation from certain guys in the match. Um, but yeah, the, the result of the match was the New Day defeated the bar. Um, out of five, I would have gave it three stars being there. Um, but yeah, it was a cool match to start off. Uh, the next match was for the women's title. It was uh, Charlotte. Flair versus Becky Lynch. Uh, this was the start of the whole uh, Becky Lynch Charlotte angle, where Charlotte was getting all the glory, and then just that uh, Becky Lynch had finally had enough. And then, yeah, it involved obviously, uh, I believe it was SummerSlam, where Charlotte won the women's title and Becky Lynch was in the match. And she expected Becky Lynch to be all buddy buddy about it, but that didn't turn out that way whatsoever. So, Becky Lynch just ended up screwing her over and that started the whole I'm the man gimmick. Um, this was during the phase where people were supposed to hate Becky Lynch. However, it sort of went the other way around where people still cheered Becky Lynch. They loved her. Um, Charlotte Flair was getting bit... She was still getting cheered by a few, but uh, yeah, like Charlotte Flair ended up being the heel during this feud. Uh, the match ended with Charlotte winning by DQ. Um, nothing 
it was a bit of a dusty finish. Like it wasn't clean at all. Like what happened was basically Becky Lynch used her belt to get disqualified. So that was definitely started the, um, a heel don't uh, do whatever it takes to keep this belt. And I don't care what you think. So the match, that match was pretty good itself seen in person. Um, that was probably, I'll give that a, uh, two and a half. St- well, no, actually I'll give that three stars as well. Um, yeah, that match was, match was good to see and just, yeah, it was popping. The next match was John Cena and Bobby Lashley versus Elias and Kevin Owens. Uh, the match started with Elias and Kevin Owens in the ring, uh, doing a good old promo with Elias playing the guitar and doing random Melbourne football references against Mick Malthouse and Collingwood. So I don't know how he knows about that stuff, but obviously someone was in his ear to tell him about AFL stuff. So the crowd was pretty uh, angry, <laughs> you'd say, about what he was saying. Um, and then, yeah, and then the man himself, John Cena, came out. Bobby Lashley came out, and it was the match itself. It the crowd was fully into it just because they, I think, just appreciated seeing John Cena in person. Like with the match, uh, John Cena at the time we thought was not going to be there because he was conflicted to. I believe he either started or he was in the middle of shooting a movie with Jackie Chan. Um, you could tell that there was some sort of involvement regarding that insurance stuff because basically the match itself just involved mostly Lashley doing most of the work for the good guys while Elias and Owens were just basically nearly playing a handicap match against Lashley while John Cena was just on the on the sideline, on the, on the apron, just waiting for the top tag. And basically the only physical involvement John Cena really got involved in was he might have got hit once or twice and then the rest of the time he did his five moves of doom and then he introduced his sixth one which was basically a move he supposedly learned from Jackie Chan in Shanghai it was some weird name that Corey Graves was able to uh, recognize but yeah no, nobody knew what the hell was it was basically just a straight punch to the jaw and then that was it so and yeah he yeah Johnson just did the punch Elias went down he got the pin the match wasn't great really like there was one part in the match where I believe Elias was supposed to just go underneath Bobby Lashley and he just mistimed a leapfrog so it looked a bit awkward um with that match I'd probably give it uh two stars yeah it was a bit bit average but obviously the match was made by the um the involvement of John Cena post-match John Cena did a speech and with the speech everyone around me in the crowd thought he was going to possibly announce a retirement um he did start off saying how appreciative he was and how he could tell that he's got limited time left in the ring yeah so that could be maybe the last time i ever get to see john cena in person in a WWE ring but time will tell uh the next match was the start of the home crowd uh involvement of basically hometown stars so it was Naomi and Asuka versus the Iconics, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Um, yeah, this match was pretty, I want to say, I don't want to say rubbish, but it was borderline between rubbish and average. Uh, uh, Asuka was good. Naomi was okay. Just with, with Peyton Royce and Billy Kay at the time, they nearly overacted everything, whether it was just getting hit and they just would be days Like, I don't know, it was just... If you've had the watch out for the first time, you could definitely be like, yep, yeah, that's fake. That's fake. Um, yeah, I'd give that I'd give that match one and a half stars. Um, not much else could be said, so, so for obviously at this time, the Iconics are very heel and still heel. However, in Australia, the crowd goes nuts. So that's understandable. And yeah, at the time, Iconics weren't built up that well. And Naomi and Oscar were obviously built in terms of, Naomi's a former women's champion, Oscar was only just recently copped her first loss on the WWE stage. So, yeah, that, yeah. So it was a bit weird of uh, ending, but it was just to please the crowd mostly, to be honest. The next match was for the WWE title. It was AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. I believe this was at the stage where Samoa Joe had copped a few a uh, few losses to AJ Styles already or he was on the losing end of the feud 
uh, it got to the point where it reached its peak in terms of Samoa Joe was able to get an AJ Styles head, being able to talk about his wife, Wendy, and how he's going to be, uh, he's the one that should be called Daddy and all this other stuff, which was pretty random. But um, yeah, good, got some good heat from the crowd and the, yeah, they were loving it. Um, uh, pretty simple, just AJ Styles end up winning that match. Uh, give that match two and a half stars. Um, yeah, not much else could be said about the match really, apart from it was there. It went for about 15 minutes. Yeah. AJ Styles with another victory. The next match, uh, the crowd was pretty pumped for. It was, uh, the, I guess, the Australian debut of, of WWE debut of Ronda Rousey, where it was her and the Bellas, Nikki and Brie, versus the Riot Squad. Um, with this match, uh, Ronda Rousey... Uh, how to put this? She was basically un- they made her look unbeatable like every person she could just easily dispose of just like that and even at the end it ended with her doing a double arm bar on uh who was it? Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan and they both tapping out like it was a pretty cool ending to see but come on now no one's yeah that was very unrealistic uh for that sort of match and the talent in the ring yeah that's probably a two and a half star match I'd give it the next match was another Aussie hometown hero. This one is, uh, it probably was the match of the night. Yeah, I'll say that. It was Buddy Murphy versus Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight Championship. Um, the storyline with this was Cedric has been, at the time, was a dominant Cruiserweight Champion. I believe he held it since the previous WrestleMania. So that would be about five months he had that for, five, six months. And he was going up against Buddy Murphy, who was basically up, up and coming, he's uh, yeah, rising, and yeah, basically, <laughs> there was some awesome Aussie chants out there, that was like, come on, buddy, come on, come on, like typical Australian chants, so it was pretty cool to see that and hear that, um, but yeah, obviously, the concept was Cedric's a face, buddy's a heel, however, the crowd played it up, so basically it was the other way around, and not sure if Cedric Alexander's used to that because he he looked a bit dumbfounded by why he was getting booed and everyone was loving Buddy Murphy and yeah Buddy Murphy was doing heel things and there was even one point where he did a quick I believe it was a knee to the face like within the first thirty seconds of the match he nearly got a pin from that and but they ended up having a good solid match that went I gave some time I think it was about 15, 16 minutes but um yeah Buddy Murphy ended up winning and uh yeah winning his first Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, the next match was The Shield. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. They squared off against uh, Hill, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre. This was at the stage where Braun Strowman turned to Hill, which was, even WWE would say, it was probably a stupid move at the time because the crowd was eating up everything Braun did and the crowd was just cheering and all of a sudden they turned him heel so that was a bit weird but anyway the match they gave the match about 25 minutes um yeah considered the star power that might have been the match of the night star power wise uh but yeah I'd still give that maybe three stars like the whole concept and storyline behind it was uh those the three bad guys were trying to get Dean Ambrose to turn heel and basically turn on the shield because obviously at the time Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins were gaining all the championships and the glory. But um, yeah, there was even one point in the storyline where, oh, actually one point in the match, sorry, where Dean Ambrose was on one side of the ring and it looked like he was going to help the bad guys and he ended up just charging straight for the bad guys. So it was end up being a cool thing to see. Obviously a few weeks later, uh, there was some bad news. Obviously Roman Reigns, uh, had to relinquish his championship due to being diagnosed with leukemia. However, he's back wrestling today and he's killing it. Uh, and obviously, with the story, and, obvi- and that would be the last time you see this shield because Dean Ambrose is now John Moxley in AEW. So it was definitely one of those things where, wow, I never thought it'd be once in a lifetime where I might see the last match of the shield in Australia, but. 
yeah, they only had a handful of matches after that together, and that was it. But yeah, end up the match ended with the Shield winning, and yeah, it was a cool, yeah, just a little fun match. The next match was Daniel Bryan versus The Miz, where the winner would receive a title shot a couple of weeks later against uh, AJ Styles. Yeah, so Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. They've got a long history together, straight through the early NXT days where Daniel Bryan was the student, The Miz was the teacher, even though The Miz would cop a lot of flack that he'd be the one that's the worst, uh, worst wrestler than Daniel Bryan, which is the truth. However, obviously it, it hurt the ego a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's just the way it was. Um, this match was very quick. It ended with just a simple roll-up and the crowd was so dumbfounded because we thought that this was going to be the end of the feud. They'll give this match some time. However, it lasts a good, I think it was like two and a half, three minutes. Um, yeah, just the Miz got rolled up. There was a free count and even we were all like stunned like, wait, that was it? Like, and, and so it was just like silence. There wasn't any heavy cheers or booze. It was just silent. That one second of silent where we're just like, did that just happen? No, that can't be the free count, but it was. So Daniel Bryan got the win. Um, eventually he would, um, after this event, would go on to win the title and turn heel himself. However, yeah, this match was just weird to end the feud between the two. Um, yeah, it went for about two and a half minutes. It was definitely a dud. I'd give it a one and a half star, only because even in that couple of minutes, they still went hard. But yeah. And the main event, it was promoted as the last time ever. It was Triple H versus The Undertaker. Triple H was accompanied by Shawn Michaels and Undertaker was accompanied by Kane. The match was very slow. It was it was deliberate. Like, obviously, both of them are older and past their prime, but they got main event time and they tried to do what they could with it. Um... We all thought, well, the crowd, I could tell the crowd wanted Undertaker to win. Like, just they had that vibe about it. They were happy, he was the one that was getting heavier cheered. However, I just had this feeling that I don't even remember Triple H ever beating Undertaker. So the fact that they promoted this match as the last time ever, it just made it seem like it was just destined for Triple H to get the win. And yeah, after the match went for about, I think it was 25, 30 minutes. It was definitely... A fair bit, um, and end up winning, end up resulting in Triple H winning the match. Um, there was a few interferences by both Shawn Michaels and Kane because it was a no DQ match. So obviously you saw stuff like uh, chairs, the sledgehammer, and just yeah, just the usual weapons that <laughs> that end up being underneath the ring. Um, yeah, it ended with Triple H winning. I uh, end up with all four of them shaking hands in the middle of the ring, and then. To top it all off at the end, Undertaker and Kane just said, screw this, and then smashed both Triple H and Shawn Michaels to end the show. And um, obviously, that was the, a continuation of what the storyline would be at the next pay-per-view, which was in Saudi Arabia at Crown Jewel, where they end up doing Undertaker and Kane versus Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Uh, the match was, uh, it was good quality for, um, I guess, what to expect. I, would, I gave it two and a half stars. Um, uh, the crowd might have been a bit dead for the match. Then again, maybe a lot of them were maybe younger fans. Like, But yeah, the crowd... I could t- You could tell the crowd was not into the match or heavily interested in the, the, the parts that dragged on. But yeah, that was it. That was WWE Super Showdown 2018 held at MCG Melbourne Cricket Ground. Um, Yeah, thank you for listening to this podcast and expect plenty more to come. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Troy Perry Podcast.